Well, good afternoon, welcome. So quick show of hands, who was in my presentation that I just did on Java on Crack? Okay, most people, good. Because you may find that there's at least one slide that you recognize in this presentation. Right, so what I'm gonna talk about is the cloud native compiler, JIT as a service. And obviously if we look at Java, the Java virtual machine, we use just-in-time compilation to enable us to get better performance for our applications. And for those of you who have my previous presentation, you will recognize this slide. Essentially what we're seeing here is the way that an application performs on Java typically. And we start off with interpreting bytecodes. We take the bytecodes from our class files, we interpret them, and convert those to native instructions for each bytecode. And that's very slow. So what we then do is we go through the idea of looking for methods that we call frequently, find those, pass them to a JIT compiler, which will compile them quickly, but without too much optimization. That improves the performance a bit. And then when that method gets used more and more, we take profiling information we've collected, pass it to another JIT compiler, which can compile it more heavily optimized, and get us better and better performance code. And the time that it takes us to get to where we've compiled all the methods that we use frequently and get the best possible level of performance for our code is what we call application warm-up time. Now, that's something that we've accepted with Java and for many applications, that's not really too much of an issue because if you're going to run an application for hours or days or weeks even, if it takes a couple of minutes to get up to full speed, then do you really care? Not so much. But if you're using microservices kind of architecture where you're spinning up services, shutting them down on a very frequent basis, the time it takes to warm up to optimum level of performance is going to be an issue. So the way that JVMs work at the moment is that they are isolated. So they're not connected to other instances from the JVM level. Sure, you can have microservices, you can have different things connecting via RESTful web services and all that sort of thing. But from the JVM's perspective, they don't communicate. There's no connection between them. There also isn't any memory of what's happened in the past. So when you start up an application, it goes through the same process of analysis that it did previously. And every time you start it up, it does that. The other thing about the JVM is it, it, it's entirely self-reliant. So it has its local resources, it's limited to those resources, especially if you're running in a container, that can be a small amount, and you know, all sorts of different things there. There's no concept of, of this magic cloud, which we rely on for applications as we move into that sort of architecture. So the, the things that we face are limited compute power, limited storage, limited local functionality, limited analytical capabilities, and limited knowledge, which is really the important thing there. If we look at the JVM, we can see, you know, sort of block diagram like this. And we don't need to go into all the details of this, but essentially, you know, you've got your class, lo class loader subsystem, which deals with loading classes. You've got your runtime data area, your heap, your method area, your stack, native stack, memory, and so on. And then you've got the things that actually do the work for the JVM. The interpreter, JIT compilers, garbage collector, all those types of things. So what we've done is said to ourselves, okay, why don't we take that architecture and abstract out part of it, specifically JIT compilation? If we do that, why don't we make it part of a service in the cloud? What we can then do is say, okay, let's take all these instances of microservices that we're running, and rather than individually doing their compilation, and every time you start up the same service, the JVM has to do its own thing in terms of compiling its code, going through that analysis and so on. Why not have the JIT compiler abstract it out, take it away, and let them share amongst many JVMs? And we can put that into the cloud. So we can run it as a service. So cloud native compiler is effectively JIT as a service. Obviously that has a number of benefits. Now, if we look at a graph like this, hopefully that's visible, yes. So what we're seeing here is a typical kind of environment where we've got a two vCore container, so a nice small container. And the orange graph there is the graph if we use the C2JIT compiler that you get in Hotspot. 
What that's doing is it's saying, okay, we need to go through this warm-up phase, we need to analyze the methods, and we need to get to our optimum level of performance. So the throughput quite quickly gets to a steady state. But the level that we get to is fixed. Now, if we look at the blue line, the blue line uses a different JIT compiler that we've included in our Azul Platform Prime. It's called Falcon. It's based on LLVM. So it uses a different approach to optimizing the code. It takes longer to do that. And we can see that it's got a much slower warm-up phase. And you see all sorts of uh, dips in performance, which is due to de-optimizations. Um, because of the amount of time I've got, uh, I haven't got time to go into all the, the details of speculative optimizations. Those of you who were in my previous presentation will have already uh, got that information. But essentially what we're doing is we're getting to a higher level of overall performance. On the right-hand side there, you can see the blue line is maybe 20% higher than the orange line. So the, the overall result is good because we get better performance for the application. But the time it takes to get to that level of performance is much longer. The other thing that's really significant is our CPU utilization. And what we see there is the fact that we've got two V cores. The compiler needs to use one of those V cores to do the work. So what we're seeing there is that the CPU utilization gets very high to begin with on the orange line because it's doing the compilation, but then it drops down because it's done all its compilation and these two V cores can be used by the application. In the blue case, we're seeing again suffering more at the beginning because we're having to do more work, more compilation, and so on. So this is good from the point of view of getting better performance, but bad from the point of view that it takes longer to do. So if we use our JIT as a service and we overlay this with the green line, what we see now is that by shifting things out to the JIT separately, we get the same steepness in terms of startup for the green line as we would with the orange line, so that's good. We get the same overall performance that we get with the blue line because we're getting the same compiled code, but now we're not having slow warm-up, we're not having these dips in performance. And the reason for that is obviously because we can share the data between many different instances. So we can avoid those problems of de-optimizations because we know which ones have failed, keep that in our cache, in our centralized JIT, and that way we get the best of both graphs in that we've got steep startup performance and we've got better performance overall. Even better is the CPU utilization graph because immediately we can see that uh, we start off and we drop down very, very quickly because the work is being done by a different part of the cloud. So we even outperform the orange graph in terms of not placing such a load on the CPUs to start off with. And it drops off very quickly and stays there. So it means we get better overall performance, lower load on the CPU. And then if I just sort of take the blue line out to make it more obvious, you can see the, the distinction between the two. Isn't this just shifting the cost, though? So if we move from having the JIT compiler in the JVM itself to moving it into a centralized service, well, OK, so I'm not using the two V cores for my application, but I've got to put more V cores somewhere else, and I'm paying for the cloud utility to actually do that. And the answer is yes, but we can be much more efficient, can't we? Because now we can share compiled code between multiple instances of our microservice. If we want to spin up new instances, Rather than having to go through you know, passing a method and saying, right, compile that, the first time it happens, yes, we compile it. But the second time another instance sends a request for that method, then so long as it matches the method in terms of the profile, we don't have to do the compilation. We simply take it out of our cache, pass it back, and get it very, very quickly. We can also optimize the resources that we've got so we can reduce the amount of time that it takes to do that compilation. Rather than running a two vCore instance, we run a 12 vCore instance. We can compile code very quickly doing that, and we can optimize according to that. So this gives us the, the, the idea of you know, resources are shared, reused, and we can also make those resources elastic. If we find that we're heavily loading our compile system, we can just create another instance of it. We can increase the number of resources for it. So here, again, we can see the, the principle behind this is that we've got numerous JVMs on the right, all running an application. They need to send requests to our compile service. And what we can do is we can match those requests against the code we've got. 
In this case, if we take the same method and all five of these JVMs are calling for that particular method, what we can also do is, like I say, we can match on the profiling information that we can deliver so that we can say, if we've got this method that was compiled based on these assumptions, so the speculative optimizations that we used there, if that matches, we return that to that particular JVM, so it gets that, that code. In the case of the two that have got the red X, what that says is, right, it's the same method, but maybe we don't have a, a method that matches against the profiled code that we need for that particular method. So in that case, we would compile it based on that optimizations, pass it back, and then get a new instance that we can keep in the cloud. The key thing here is that we can have the same method multi compiled multiple times based on different profiles and share those again amongst different JVMs. So just to summarize, basically the idea behind the cloud native compiler is we decouple the JIT from the JVM and that gives us a number of distinct advantages. So we can see better resource utilization, we can see better optimized code for reuse. This is one of the things that we're experimenting with now is that because we, we now detach the, the JIT compiler, if we throw more resources at the compilation as a service, we can actually go into much heavier optimization, the kind of thing that takes longer to do, but by doing that, we can deliver higher performing code for the JVM, especially on startup again, because we can, we can get that code uh, available for it. Gives us, as we saw, much faster warm up time, we get better overall performance, best of both worlds in terms of not having the CPU load and getting that better performance. This does exist today, so uh, if you want to try it out, you can go to our uh, website. There's a, a download, you can get it for free. You can do it, use it for development and testing for free, and you can try it out. Basically, what we can do is provide you with a Kubernetes cluster that sets up the compile environment, and then you can configure that to run with your JVMs, have your JVMs connect to it, have that do the compilation, and see all of the benefits that uh, I've just explained to you. So with that, uh, I have a couple of minutes left. So uh, yeah, thank you very much. And since I have a couple of minutes, if anybody, oh, I question there. Yep. <laughs> I'll repeat the question. So, so the, the the question is, what are the? How do you match the the, the profile for a given method? And it, it's based on these things called speculative optimizations. And what you can do um, when you compile code with a JIT, you can look at how that code has been used up until that point in time. So, the example I used in my previous presentation, we do branch analysis. If you've got an if statement and you only ever go through the true branch, then you optimize based on thinking that it will always only go through the true branch. Now, if some other code goes through the true branch and the false branch, then you optimize differently. So you could have two versions of that method compiled. So if the, the three that had the, the green tick, those are the ones that only ever go through the true branch. So their profiling data shows that they've only ever gone through the true branch. You make that assumption, you deliver that code. The other two say, I go through the true branch and the false branch, different optimized code, you deliver that. So it's, it's things like that. The, essentially, what we do is we create a unit of compilation, which is a compiled code, and a set of assumptions about that code, which need to be matched from the profiling data of the JVM. So it's, it's, it's based on that. Oh yeah. Um, so if you've let's say we've got a new deploy and we're running in a with a number of containers, you know, ten or something. I deploy a whole bunch of new code and they're all going to spin up at basically the same time. How well does it cope with that? Um, it would cope with that in the sense that so long as it, it would it would know the method, it would know the the uh, code. So you've got ten ten all running at the same time. The first one that sends a request that will start being compiled. As soon as that code is ready, it will be delivered to the first one. If there are the other nine that make the same call sort of a few milliseconds later or whatever. Um, what we would do is, because it would match, we would simply say, okay, we'll wait until we've compiled the code for that first method that was passed. And so long as it matches, we then just deliver that back to them. So we wouldn't set up 10 simultaneous compiles of the same piece of code. Um, we would recognize that it's uh, the same piece of code. And as long as we compile it once, then we deliver the results. Does that make sense? 
Hi, actually, I again have two, two questions. Uh, one is, uh, what you are returning as a compilation result is object file, it's a sample LLVM code. Uh, so what is the result of the compilation? Yeah, so the, the, the result of the compilation is basically an internal structure that we use. So we, we have compiled code, which we would return to the, uh, the JVM. So the, the way that we transfer that is in a format that we have defined internally, um, so that the JIT compiler or the, the JVM just knows, OK, here's a piece of compiled code, put that into the code cache within the JVM and then make it usable. So that it's, it's as simple as that. Okay, and second question, if let's say this service is not available, it will fall back to the normal JIT or it will uh, yes, run? Yes, yeah. exactly. So we haven't removed the JIT from the JVM. We leave it there. So if you make a call to the compile service and it, it doesn't respond and it's not there, um, then it will just fall back to using the local JIT in the JVM. So there's, there's no like, oh no, there's no JIT. So we're just only ever going to run interpreted by, no, it doesn't do that. Okay, I'm run out of time, so um, if you have other questions, I'll be at the st um, our stand, uh, so you can come and find me there. Thank you very much.